When it comes to 4K monitors, there are some that are good, there are some that are bad, and there are some that are just really, really good. Now, where does the Gigabyte Aorus FV43U fall in all of that? We'll find out right here, right now on Robitech. The 4K trend has grabbed more market share over the past year than any other year prior, and it's expected to continue to increase 23% in annual growth by 2024, according to MarketWatch.com. Now, while companies like Asus, Acer, LG, Samsung, and HP, just to name a few, make a good quality gaming monitor, what makes a great one? Well, Gigabyte with their Aorus line is attempting to do just that with the Gigabyte Aorus FV43U, a whopping 43-inch 4K gaming monitor that is absolutely gorgeous on the outside, but what about the inside? Well, let's have a rundown on the specs, shall we? The Aorus FV43U is an astounding 43-inch behemoth of a monitor with a design concept that is constructed digitally, as is everything in the Aorus dimension. The lighting and patterns are mapped on the monitor with sharp, slick-looking lines that supports up to a 4K 3840x2160 UHD resolution. Your very popular 144Hz refresh rate, 120Hz for console gaming, but more on that in a bit, and one millisecond response time with a 4000 to 1 contrast ratio for those deep, deep blacks. HDR 1000, AMD FreeSync Premium Pro, and weighs about 15 pounds with a dimension that is 38 inches by 25.12 inches and roughly 10 inches with the stand. Without the stand, the display is 38 inches by 23 inches with a very thin three and a half inch width. It's a VA panel that has quantum dot technology with an anti-glare surface. The anti-glare is an extra layer of coating that allows you to use the monitor in bright light settings or working outdoors or near a window with sunlight you'll be able to see the screen with little to no reflection on the display. The color saturation is 97% DCI-P3, 150% sRGB, and 99% Adobe RGB. The display colors are 10 bits, 8 bits plus FRC. What this means is that while it's not a true 10-bit monitor that displays 1,024 shades of each primary color and over a billion possible colors, you have an 8-bit monitor with an FRC, and the FRC is called frame rate control. This feature allows the 8-bit monitor with FRC to virtually display the same number of colors as a true 10-bit monitor. Will you notice the difference? Well, that depends on what you're doing. If you're using it for gaming and the occasional show on Netflix, then no. If you're using this monitor for professional work with color creating initiatives, such as color editing, video editing, or photo editing, or you work on National Geographic, then yes, you'll more than likely notice a difference in true 10-bit monitor, which will have a much more accurate color display. That is not to take away from the Aorus FV43U, as the display is amazing in every aspect, and it gets bright like with a pre-brightness of a thousand nits, which makes this screen pretty darn awesome when you crank up the brightness all the way. Now, do you want to play with the brightness all the way up? Probably not, as having a screen this bright is like looking at the sun and it's eventually gonna develop some eye strain, which may not be the best idea. Oh my gosh, turn it down! Now for inputs, you have two HDMI 2.1 ports that support 4K UHD at 120 hertz for PS5 and Xbox Series X slash S. Yep, that is worth noting. They are not only just targeting PC gaming, but they're also targeting next-gen consoles. Along with that, you get a single 1.4 display port, one USB-C port on the back, along with two USB 3 ports, a USB USB-B or USB upstream port. For the built-in KVM, you get an audio line out and a three and a half inch millimeter jack. It also comes with a simple remote to control. It looks much like an Amazon Fire Stick remote. The joystick on the bottom of the monitor is how you actually access your menu. The feel of the joystick seems to be okay, unlike the Gigabyte M27Q 2K 27-inch joystick, which feels really cheap. Wait, Roby, did you say KVM? Why, yes. Yes, I did. The Aorus FV43U has a built-in KVM switch. That means you can connect it up to two different devices, such as two desktops, two laptops, a desktop and a laptop, a console and a desktop, and, well, you get the point. A lot of newer monitors from Gigabyte and other companies are starting to come with KVM switches built in. And it's nice to see this in a world of working virtually. What is a KVM switch, you might ask? Well, KVM stands for Keyboard Video Monitor and Mouse. The main function of the KVM switch is to control or switch between multiple PCs or any other combination above as mentioned while using the same monitor. No, this doesn't mean you'll be able to see both devices hooked into the KVM switch at the same time, but it does mean you can use the monitor to seamlessly, or so we hope, switch 
switch between them with a press of the button or two. To use KVM portion of your monitor, you must first understand how to hook it up. The KVM supports two types of connections, a USB-A to USB-B upstream, where the USB-B will plug into the monitor side and the USB-A part into your computer. Then USB-C, which plugs into the second device via USB-C or USB-A. After you have these plugged in, you will have to plug in the video portion of the cables, such as DisplayPort or HDMI. The current arrangement only allows for one of the video inputs to be DisplayPort, while the second must be connected via HDMI. Currently, there is no way to have DisplayPort for both input connections, which is not a big deal as the monitor only has one DisplayPort connection on it anyway. Also keep in mind that the video over USB-C cannot be used when DisplayPort is connected either. When all of this is finally hooked up, you can plug your keyboard and mouse into the monitor where the two USB 3 ports are and you'll be able to utilize the KVM switch via the KVM button on the monitor or within the menu settings. But Roby, isn't there going to be latency issues by not directly hooking it into the computer itself? Yes, there will be a tiny bit of latency, but nothing you're going to notice while playing a game. Now, if you're competitive gaming in tournaments, then you may want to skip the KVM portion of the monitor and plug directly into the computer you're gaming on. But I don't know why you would be doing that at a tournament unless you may be a cheater. The Aorus FV43U does have two 12 watt speakers built in and it is suitable for both PC and console gameplay. As a replacement TV, maybe. And you may want to add a sound bar, which is going to make it sound a whole lot better. If you're in a pinch, it'll work, but it's not the best sound. There are a ton of features built into this monitor with the likes of the Gigabyte OSD Sidekick. Six axis color control, in which this feature allows you to adjust six colors, red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow individually to more accurately display the color gamut on the monitor. You've got aim stabilizer sync, a black equalizer, you've got crosshair, smart overdrive, and space audio, but there are a few features on there that are built in that I really like, and one is the power type. What I mean is, is you don't have this enormous power brick that the cord has to like plug into and then you plug into the wall. You have one cord coming out of the back and all you do is plug that directly into the wall. And it's a standard power cord anyway, which is also nice. And if you need to order something longer, you're not necessarily worried about anything proprietary. A definite space saver for sure, especially if you're looking to mount this on the wall, as it is VESA certified with a 200 millimeter mounting config. But given it's 43 inches, Putting a power brick in kind of makes sense. Now, OSD Sidekick is another feature that stands out as it is a utility that can be downloaded from the support page of the monitor and installed. To use OSD Sidekick, you must have a USB-B upstream from the monitor to a USB-A cable plugged into your computer. After you've hooked it up, whether you are utilizing KVM or not, you can open up the OSD Sidekick program you downloaded. This gives you complete menu access via the mouse rather than going through the menu options with the joystick and arrow button on the monitor itself. OSD Sidekick gives you full access to all the advanced settings on the monitor, such as picture mode profiles, game assist, crosshair customization, you name it, OSD Sidekick has the option inside of it. Here's the thing, OSD Sidekick is way more magical than you think. And until you've actually tried to control and change your settings on the monitor via the Sidekick versus doing it via the control stick and the joystick in the back, you'll be surprised how much more you like it. So definitely, if you get this monitor, give it a try. Lastly, another feature that stands out is the dashboard feature. Now, while there are plenty of monitoring software options out there like MSI Afterburner, EVGA X1 Precision, AMD Ryzen Master to monitor all of your like temps, usage, GPU fan speed, and even mouse DPI, Gigabyte has a built-in dashboard that can display all of this for you. That means you don't have to download any additional software if you choose not to that you can enable that feature with using the OSD site. Sidekick settings. Pretty rad. There you have it. All of the mentions and specs and features for the Aorus FV43U. Now let's see if the specs match the performance. During our testing, we found that the HDR1000 and 4000 to 1 contrast ratio this monitor has great picture quality and is completely functional for both PC and console gaming. Now when it comes to mode switching on the monitor, we found that it seems to be just okay, but it would benefit from being a bit more responsive along with the IR remote that the Aorus FV43U comes with. It can be a little finicky during our testing. It seems to be working better just by using the controls on the monitor themselves or the OSD sidekick. Now, when you are using the monitor for other things besides gameplay, such as using it for work with spreadsheets or Word documents, or looking at something on the web with like a lots of words on the screens, the low contrast fonts are visible with HDR off, but with HDR on, those same low contrast fonts pop more. So it might be better to leave the HDR on to get a crisper image no matter what you are doing. The UFO test is an online test that shows monitor blur 
in LCD displays and most OLED displays. We use this test to try and see if our monitors that we review have the same motion blur or ghosting to give you the best possible answers and information as to how the monitor performs. Now, when we ran our UFO testing on this monitor, there were a few things that jumped out at us. Let me explain. With the monitor overdrive off, there is a large and negatively impacting blur trail, as you see from the pictures with the details of the UFO that blur together with the low contrast colors bleeding, creating a fuzzy and washed out image during the movement. To understand the next part of the testing, I have to tell you what monitor overdrive is. Now, monitor overdrive or response time overdrive allows you to push the monitor's response time speed in order to reduce the trailing slash ghosting of fast moving objects. Got it? Cool. Well, let's move on. With overdrive set to max speed, the image is still a bit fuzzy and washed out with the details blurred together. This also causes what is called inverse ghosting on the image that is blurred. Here, take a look for yourself. You notice that the ghosting effect on the left side of the UFO. With overdrive set to smart overdrive, we found that this is the best balance between the speed of max and off settings. While there are some blur trails that are still present, as you can see from the picture, they are much smaller than any of the other two tests we ran with max and off speed settings. The image is still a little washed out and a little blurred out as well. Now finally, balance and picture quality settings have little to no difference to the smart overdrive, as smart overdrive will automatically adjust all of the settings. And we have found that this is the best option to use. You can manually adjust all those settings to get it where you want it to be, but if you want a quick way to adjust them and not lose any quality, and you want to maintain the superb picture quality, then turn on Smart OD in Overdrive. All right, now that we've covered all of the testing, what do I think? Currently, I'm putting the monitor in the top five of 4K gaming monitors that I have tested. The colors just pop, the gameplay is smooth, and if you have the space, it is a must buy. Some recommendations are to set the monitor overdrive settings to Smart OD, as inverse ghosting and blur trails in competitive games like Call of Duty Warzone can be distracting and the Smart OD will minimize those blur trails. For single player games such as Cyberpunk 2077, HDR 1000 along with that 4000 to 1 contrast ratio makes for an exquisite gameplay experience as you'll be able to see almost every detail of Night City from the Badlands to Pacifica to Haywood. You'll be able to feel and be immersed in the game and you'll have a smile on your face throughout your experience. Some of the things that bother me about this monitor, the fact that we have to set it to Smart OD to get the best possible picture quality, therefore not being able to tune the monitor manually to get the same results is kind of a letdown. But it's nothing that we can't get past as there are too many pros and not enough cons to not recommend this monitor. Newegg and Amazon currently sell the monitor for an MSRP of $1,099. But as of late, we've seen this on sale for as low as $949.99 with a current price at Newegg of $999.99 after a $50 instant discount and a $50 rebate card. Comparing this to the last monitor we reviewed in the Corsair Xenion, it's only a $200 price difference, give or take $50 depending on the sale at the time. If you want a 4K experience and you have the PC equipment to handle 4K or one of those awesome next-gen consoles, then it's easy. Buy the Gigabyte Aorus FV43U. Links to the monitor below. So what did you think? Did you enjoy the review? Did you wanna see more on this monitor? If so, what more would you like to see and what more can we cover in these review? Leave a comment down below with your thoughts and feedback on the monitor and this review. We are always looking at feedback and we grow from it. If there's something you liked, tell us. If there's something you didn't like, tell us. We wanna know all of that as well. While you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we either post a video or go live right here on Robitech. Also, make sure you check out our amazing community over at discord.gg slash Robitech if you have questions about this monitor, wanna talk about tech, PC builds, whatever. You can also check out robitechdeals.com. It's the best place to find the cheapest deals on PC hardware, gaming hardware, etc. Also, if you like these super awesome Robitech merch, check out robitechstore.com. We have all of our latest merch, including our upcoming build maps that are coming in November. Finally, if you just want to follow us, check us out on all the socials at Robitech. Anyway, guys, we hope you enjoyed this video, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.